Good evening. You join New Beginnings Community Church. Our pastor is Pastor William Beasley Sr. We ask you to uplift the name of the Lord with us. We don't own the rights to this music, but we're asking that you would join in as we worship the Lord. Pray and praise his name. Bear with the rest of home. There we go. Bear with us, Bill. We'll get it together. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Mighty is the name of Jesus. Mighty is the name of Jesus. Mighty is the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Holy is the name of Jesus. Holy is the name of Jesus. Holy is the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Praise that wonderful name of Jesus. Praise that wonderful name of Jesus. Praise that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Excuse me, thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Being present with us tonight. Thank God for new beginnings being present. Amen. Thank God for you that are uh, Facebook Live. 
you too. We thank God that you have uh, elected to fellowship with us tonight. Amen. To enjoy the word of God tonight. We uh, we pray that the word will bless you, uh, bless your heart and mind. That it would encourage your soul, that it would keep you in, encouraged to uh, study and, and learn and hear more and more uh, about our great God, our, our awesome God. Mm -hmm. For we know that the Lord is soon to come. Mm -hmm. And we want to be ready when the Lord comes. We want to be prepared for his return. We want to we want to we want to be ready for when the uh, when Jesus Jesus return come. That's what we are looking for because this is not our home. We yeah. are just pilgrimaging through here, and the Lord is getting us ready for His return that we will meet Him and that we would ever be with the Lord. Yeah. And so we thank God once again for each and every one of you being with us tonight. You know there's places that you could have been that you have elected to be with us. And so we we have another lesson that we're going to try to encourage you in the Word of God tonight. To encourage you with the Word of God and in the Word of God. Amen. So we're going to pray and then we'll get into our lesson. But bow here, be gracious to Heavenly Father in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again. For your tender mercy and your kindness, we thank you, Lord God, for minds to assemble together. We thank you, Lord, for all your provisions, all that all that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you most of all for the shedding of your blood. We thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you that you're Lord of heaven and earth and that you are sovereign. We pray that you, Father, would uh, meet us in this place tonight. You said where two or three would gather together in your name that you would be in the midst. And so we look. We give honor to the spirit of Christ in our midst tonight, and we we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tonight, uh, like I said, we thank God for you. Tonight, we have another lesson that is for the body of Christ, and uh, I'll be reading the King James Version. Like always, you follow whatever translation that you use. We have it on the, on the uh, screen, the wall, or whatever, if, you, if you're able to view it. But tonight we'll be coming from 1 Thessalonians, mm -hmm. second chapter, verse 13. We're going to move pretty swiftly for time's sake. 1 Thessalonians, second chapter, verse 13. Like I said, I'll be reading the King James Version. And uh, it reads like this. For this cause, also, I'm sorry. Start again. It, it reads like this. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. He said, uh, when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Mm -hmm. That's our uh, that's our thought tonight is the word of God, which effectually working. The word of God which effectually working. Mm -hmm. That's our thought. And what we want to take note is uh, what we want to take note we will we will get into that but what we want to take note is the part or the portion of scripture where Paul says also in you that believe. Mm -hmm. That is very that is very important. Very important. To understand. Okay, let's get into uh, effectual. Effectual. Mm -hmm. Effectual is described as active, uh, uh, to be active, 
efficient, successful in producing a desired or intended result, effectiveness, mm -hmm. effectual, let me read it again, effectual, to be active or, or active, efficient, mm -hmm. successful in producing a desired or intended result, effective. Now, we, I, I suggested that you pay attention that you, I suggested a minute ago that we pay attention to believe. Mm -hmm. Now, believe suggests this, uh, faithful, true, oh. to entrust, conviction, reliable. Mm -hmm. Believe, believe suggests faithful, true, to entrust, conviction, Reliable. Now, let's put this, let's put it back together. Scripture says, 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye receive the word of God, ye receive, when you see the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. What Paul, what Paul is trying to get the Thessalonians to understand is that the word of God, he was glad, he was glad that they received the word of God as it is in truth, the word of God, mm -hmm. and not receive it as the word of men. Right. This is very important to understand because he said the word of God is it, 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 effectual. The word of God is effectual. And that word effectual says it is active. It is efficient. The word of God is successful in producing a desired, desired or an intended result. He said, right. this is what the word of God is. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say, also in you that believe. So the Bible lets us know that what if one didn't believe? Does that make the faith of God of none effect? Mm -hmm. God forbid. No, it doesn't. Hear what the Apostle Paul is saying to the body of Christ. The word of God effectually working. The word of God is, is, is successful in its intended and desired uh, cause or effect or purpose. It's going to do that. But it will also, he said, he, it will also work in you and I if we believe. Mm -hmm. And that word believe Suggest to us faithful, true, to entrust. The word of God will always, the word of God will also be effectual and it would be active and it would be efficient in us. Mm -hmm. Also, if we believe, if we're faithful in our belief, if we are true to the word, I'm sorry, if we're faithful to the word, right. if we are true to the word, right. if we entrust the word. If if we hold the word in our conviction, mm -hmm. and if we are liable to the word, he said, this word of God, he said, I, I, I thank God that you have received it as it is in truth the word of God. Yeah. The word of God effectually working. And this is one thing the body of Christ must understand. That the word of God works. It, yeah. The word of God works. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we scratch our head because we are trying to figure out and understand, okay, what is the problem in my situation? What is the problem in my condition? Check yourself because the problem in your or my situation could be that uh, we lack the belief. 
Now, uh -huh. belief suggests that we are faithful to the word. All right. That we trust or true to the word. That we entrust the word. Because Paul outlined it already. He said the word of God effectually working. The word God does. But it also works in us that believe. So we understand with, uh, with Israel, we understand with ancient Israel, they allowed a bitter spirit of unbelief in their mm -hmm. heart. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the Lord was upset with that. And he, he swore that he would not allow them to enter into his rest because of their unbelief. Mm -hmm. Because of their unbelief. Because of their unfaithfulness. <laughs> because of their unfaithfulness. Because of their unbelief. Uh, and so, if you remember, he brought the Israelites out of Egypt, out of bondage. And he promised them, he, he had given them the promised land. And they were to go over and spy out the land, 12 spies. Mm -hmm. And Joshua and Caleb were the only two that came back with positive reports, came back believing, he came back <clears throat> believing and trusting that the word of God was true. Their conviction had them excited about possessing the promised land. But the other 10, they didn't believe. Right. They said that there, there were giants in the land and they said that they looked at like grasshoppers in their eyes to the giants. Mm -hmm. So the Lord was upset. The Lord was upset with that generation. And he swore that they would not enter into his rest. They were not going to the promised land. Mm -hmm. And so he allowed them to wander in the wilderness 40 years until their cor carcasses, their bodies fell out, died in the wilderness. And it was that generation that was 20 years old and younger that went into the promised land with Joshua. Mm -hmm. The older generation didn't go simply because uh, simply because of unbelief. This is why Paul is admonishing the church that the word of God also worketh effectually in you and I that believe, that are faithful to it, that are true to it, that mm -hmm. entrust it. And so the emphasis that uh, Paul is trying to get the church to simply understand that it is the word of God right. and not the word of men. We have we have a, we have a, a problem <laughs> with uh, the word of men versus the word of God. The Christian community, the Christian world, uh, just like the Thessalonians, a lot of there's a lot of misunderstanding going on. Just like in the Thessalonians, there were a lot of misunderstanding with uh, the Word of God, with the, the the doctrine and the prophecies and all that type of thing. Mm -hmm. We have that same issue today. We have uh, what is running rampant in the body of Christ or in the church is the philosophy of men. This is what Paul is talking about. He's talking about the philosophy of men. Mm -hmm. And he was thanking God that the Thessalonians received the word as it is in truth, the word of God, and not the word of men or not the philosophies of men. The philosophies of men are causing a lot of people uh, to miss out on the active word of God, to miss out on the living right. word of God, to miss out on the effectual word of God, which says that its intended mm -hmm. desire or purpose will be fulfilled. All right. But you have to believe it. <laughs> you have to believe it. And believe say you have to be faithful to it, to the word. You have to be true to the word. You have to entrust to the word. Not just lip service and saying, oh, yeah, I'm a believer.
But are you faithful to the word? To the word. There's a lot of us that have determined we believe, but we still do things that unbelievers do. Mm. So if you and I believe, then we are faithful to the word. If you and I believe, then we entrust our situations to the word. Right. We entrust our conviction to the word. We can't declare we are a believer on Sunday and then on Monday through Saturday, we live like an unbeliever. Hmm. That's not being a believer. That's not being faithful. All right. The, 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 uh, the, emphasis, the emphasis here is on the word of God, not the philosophy of man. We have to stop allowing men uh, to tell us everything that we do is all right. It's okay. It's all right. Mm -hmm. You're fine. Go ahead and do it. We have to stop falling for the philosophy of men right. and understand the effectual working of the word of God. God's word in, uh, in, in God's word is everything that we need is our is our salvation yes. and in our salvation there's deliverance there's healing right. there's joy there's peace all these things that money can't buy you have to hear what right. the spirit is saying this is a spiritual warfare this is in the word of God your healing your joy your peace your comfort all these things that philosophy when you receive, when you receive the word of God as it is in truth, the word of God, the word of God is effectually working in you. The intended desire to comfort you, to deliver you, to bring you to salvation, is is working. <laughs> Let's get in the lesson. Isaiah fifty five and eleven. Mm -hmm. So much so, Isaiah fifty five and eleven. It says, "So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth." It shall not return unto me void, right. but it shall accomplish that which I please. This is so important to hear and understand. The word of God will accomplish that which I please. This is the Lord talking. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. This right. is why it's so important to, to uh to receive the word of God as it is in truth, the word of God and not the philosophy of man because the word of God will not return void. No. God said it shall accomplish that which I please, that which he please. He said, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent. We have to understand the significance of the word of God. The word of God effectually work it. It effectually work it. And so if you want to be a part of that blessing, Paul said, it'll work in us also if we believe yes. or if we're faithful to the word mm -hmm. or if we are entrust our life to the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We're talking about the Word of God, which is effectually working. Paul asked the Romans, he said, if one, if one didn't believe, does that make the faith of God of none effect? God forbid. It's a bad thing to allow an evil spirit of unbelief to enter into our heart. That's what they call it, an evil spirit of unbelief. Next one, Psalms 119.98. Psalms 119.98. And this is uh, further confirms the significance mm -hmm. or the, uh, the efficiency of the word of God. He said, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. All right. You can believe the word of God. The word is settled in, he in heaven. You mm -hmm. can believe 
the word mm -hmm. of God. You can believe the word of God. So when you don't believe the word of God, does that make the faith of God of none effect? God forbid. No, it don't. You and I must step our faith up. We must step our belief up. You, a, a lot of times we're puzzled about things that we seemingly lack in our life. Well, do we believe, are we believing the word of God? Are we entrusting our life to the word of God? Because the word of God effectually work it. It effectually work it. Mm -hmm. And if you and I jump on by faith, it will effectually work in our life. It will bring, it will bring its intended desire uh, to pass. Yes. But it's predicated on you and I believing the word. And that is not lip service. The description says that is being faithful to it. Mm -hmm. Faithful. The Bible says the, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. The consistent, the consistency, the consistency. Man should always pray and not cease. Constant prayer, constant prayer, constant prayer availeth much in your life. Because the unrighteous man is not going to pray. An unrighteous man is not going to humble himself before the Lord and, 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 and seek the Lord's face. But a righteous man, a righteous man will have a consistent, consistent prayer life, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Uh, Come on. The gospel, the gospel of John, 12th chapter. Verse 47, 48 says, mm -hmm. and if any man hear my words and believe not, we just got to talk about that. We're getting into the New Testament. We're getting to, to, the, to the believers now. We're getting to the New Testament, New Testament believers. He said, if any man hear my words and believe not, he said, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save but to save the world, 48, he that rejected me and receiveth not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. You have to understand the significance of believing the word. Yeah. You have to understand that the Lord is looking for faithfulness to his word. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, Right. If any man hear my words and believe them not, he said, I judge him not. For I came not to the I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He came not to judge the world. He is he is not imputing our transgressions back on us. He died for our sin. Mm -hmm. His atoning, sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection was for was to pay the debt or the penalty of sin. Yeah. He said he came to save the world. And he came to save the world through his word. And so he said, if any man believe not his word, he said, I judge him not. He said, because I didn't come to judge, I came to save. He said, he that rejected me and received not my words has one that judges him, the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. When you and I get to that day of judgment, hear me and hear me well. Because a lot of us, we fall for a lot of philosophies. Mm -hmm. Read the word. When we get to that judgment, when we get to that judgment day, you and I are not going to be able to stand there and, and, and give God some... Uh, intelligent excuse. That's not going to work for you. He said he didn't come to judge. He said it's the, he said the one that's going to judge you and I is the word that he already spoke, which you have already determined you're not going to believe. So where, was, where does that leave you? And maybe you didn't say out of your mouth you didn't believe it, but what indicates you're not believing is that you're, you was not faithful to the word. Yeah. 
You said, you said it with your mouth that you were saved and that you believe, but you were not faithful to the word. And the word he said is what's going to, the word that he spoke is what's going to judge you and I in the last day. All right. So you have to understand it behooves you and I to obey the word and not the philosophy of men. Your, right. fav your favorite bishop, my favorite bishop, can't get us eternal life based upon their wisdom and their knowledge. The Bible says that our faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but it should rest in the power of God. And right. the power of God is his word. All right. Moving on. Uh, moving on. Paul said, Romans 1 16, he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? Believe it. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. He said, uh, the power of God unto salvation, everyone that believe it, we have already determined from the onset that believing, believe it is faithful. Yeah. Everyone that is faithful to the gospel, everyone that is faithful to the word of God, understand, understand what the gospel is. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So, if you believe, if you believe the gospel, mm -hmm. if you believe the gospel, then this is the process. <laughs> repentance. You die to yourself. Repentance. Mm -hmm. You're buried with Christ by baptism. Mm -hmm. And then the resurrection, or for you and I, the quickening of the Holy Ghost, which makes us alive. All right. That's the new life. That's the, the new birth. That's the new life. This is the salvation. Mm -hmm. It's not just it's not just philosophies of men, words of men. Here, the effectual working. Here, the effectual working of the word of God. It is it is the death or repentance. It is burial. It is it is the burial by baptism and water in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. It is the resurrection. It is the awakening or the quickening of the Holy Ghost, which uh, makes us alive. Mm -hmm. This is the effectual working of God's word. This is why we must believe it and be faithful to it, because this is where our eternal life is. This is where our salvation is. Mm -hmm. it, is it is It is the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have to get out of, uh, we have to get away from the old fables and old philosophies and all that based upon our intellect. And, and you know, we dealt with that a couple lessons ago about our, our feelings and so forth and on. The, uh, Paul is addressing the church here because of a lot of misunderstanding in the doctrinal situation. And uh, he don't want, he don't want anyone to be ignorant. You and I must understand that the word of God, as it is the word of God, it is true. All right. Ephesians, Ephesians 5 and 26. Ephesians 5 and 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Paul here talking to the Ephesians, telling them about the mystery of the church, telling them what the word does. I'm going to read, I'm not going to go back to it on the screen, but I'm going to read on my work on my worksheet mm -hmm. e effectually to be active, efficient, successful, in producing a desired or intended result. Sanctify and cleanse with the washing of water by the, the effectual working. Bless you, Lord. 
This is important because if we are not believing the word, then this is not happening. Believe them. Hmm. You're talking about the effectual working of the word. Mm -hmm. This is what the word is doing. It is sanctifying and it is cleansing. All right. But all that's predicated on your faithfulness to it. All right. <laughs> this is what the word, he said, he said, uh, my word will not return void. He sent, he sent his word to sanctify and to cleanse our sins. That's what the word is doing if we are believing. Nobody has to, nobody has, nobody has to ask you if you are a believer or not. A tree is known by its fruit, mm -hmm. by the fruit it bears. If your life is not sanctified, is your life is not clean, mm -hmm. then your belief is not in the word. Because the tree is known by its fruit. Mm -hmm. And, the, and, and the, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, mm -hmm. faith, meekness, gentleness, kindness, temperance. Mm -hmm. Scripture said, against such there is no law. This is the effectual working of the word. And if this is not, <laughs> and if this is not the result of my day-to-day -day living, then I am not believing. I am just believing with my mouth. I am not believing with my heart like I'm supposed to love the Lord with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. <laughs> I'm supposed to be sanctified and clean. Not, I am not supposed to be, well, you know, the Lord is not finished with me yet. Moving on. Moving on. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect as the carnal aspect of purpose. I mean, of purple, perfect purpose. But, we, but we're going to be perfect in the spiritual aspect of perfect. Why? Because the word of God is effectually working in us. So it's going to bring us to perfection. It's going to bring us to completion. Mm -hmm. The word of God is not you or I. You or I are never going to be perfect. That's why Jesus had to come and die. Yeah. So we're not talking about that. Let's get off of that. We're talking about believing the word. Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You take the helmet of salvation, which guards your mind. Because your battle, your battle and my battle is won or lost in the mind. All right. The Bible declared that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. And he's not talking about the heart in your chest. That's just a muscle that pump blood. He's talking about your mind. Mm -hmm. All right. As uh, he said, take the salvation, take the helmet of salvation. If you're familiar with this portion of scripture, this portion of scripture is talking about putting on the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. putting on the whole armor of God that you would be able to withstand or stand against the schemes or the wiles of the devil. Yeah. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. He's telling you to put on the whole, the helmet of salvation. You've got to guard your mind. You've got to guard your mind. Mm -hmm. And he's telling you to take the sword of the spirit. You take the Holy Ghost the sword of the spirit, he said, which is the word of God. The word of God is the sword. I'm sorry. The word of God is the sword. Matter right. of fact, the Bible said it's sharper than any double-edged double sword. <laughs> right. You take the, the helmet of salvation to guard your mind. 
-hmm. And you take the sword of the spirit, the sword of the Holy Ghost, which is the word, To All keep right. to to keep uh to keep the enemy from infiltrating your thoughts, All right. your actions. Because the enemy is going to try your faith. He's going to try if you believe or not. Mm -hmm. If you're just saying you believe, then the, the 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 word of God is not going to effectually work in you if you're just saying you believe and you have not put on the whole armor, if you had not put on the helmet of salvation to guard your thoughts, to guard what you're thinking. All right. We have to, we have to watch what we meditate on. Mm -hmm. And we cannot meditate. The things that we meditate on must be acceptable in the sight of God. Jesus, yes, Lord. Have to be acceptable. Not justified. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Because I'm trying not to I'm trying not to insult nobody. I'm trying to teach the word. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, look, for the word of God is. I'm going to say that again. For Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, for the word of God is. And I, right. I highlight, well, I, I, I made that bold because I wanted you to hear we're talking about the effectual working of the word of God. Listen to what the scripture said. It says, for the word of God mm -hmm. is, and then it goes on to say, quick, which is living or alive, mm -hmm. which we which we had determined in effectual, active, it's active. Mm -hmm. It's living, it's active, it's alive and powerful, mm -hmm. powerful, it's authority. <laughs> Power is authority. Yeah. It's authority. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. We just read that on the last scripture. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, check how sharp it is. It said piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner yeah. of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. We're talking about the effectual working of the word of God. This is why the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. You and I don't please God because we think that we are something. <laughs> what pleases God, what pleases God is that we are faithful to his word. Mm -hmm. Because his word is effectual. His word is effectually working. He has sent it out. He has sent out his salvation. And his word will effectually work if you believe it. Look at what he said. It is, he said it's quick, it's active, it's living, it's alive, it's powerful, it's authority. There yeah. is nothing more powerful than the word of God. John John said it like this. He said it like this. He said, in the beginning, I'm sorry, the gospel of John 1 and 1. Right. The gospel of John 1 and 1. He said, in the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, and the word was with God. That's where a lot of people like to think that Jesus was in the beginning with God. Your Bible don't say that. That's what, that's that philosophy of man. That's the assumption of man. Your Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God mm -hmm. and the word was God. It doesn't say, mm -hmm. it, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to Genesis 1 and 1, it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we're falling for the philosophy of men with this holy trinity. God has never claimed to be a holy trinity. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In Genesis 1 and 1, Moses writes, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
Hear what? This is how effectual the, the word works. Mm -hmm. This is how effectual the word works. God who speaketh those things that are not as though they were. Mm -hmm. Hear what the scripture is saying. God who, who is able to speak those things that are not as though they were mm -hmm. because of the effectual working of his word in creation. In creation, the Lord said, let there be. You fill in the blank. <laughs> We're talking about the word. He said, let there be light. It was light. He said, let there be a, 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 a lesser light for the night. And there was the moon. There was the sun. In the beginning, he created the world by the word of God. Right. This is how effectual the word of God works. He spoke it and it was. He right. said, let there be light. It was light. He said, let that, let that. And he spoke the water. Then he divided the firmament, the water the, the cloud and the sea. Mm -hmm. All because of the, the effectual working of his word, because he spoke his word. Yeah. How in the world do you think you and I are going to make it if we don't believe the word? Mm -hmm. Or if we don't believe the, uh, the effectiveness or the efficiency of the word? If we think if we believe that we can we can obey it or not, there are a lot of there are a lot of faith, a lot of beliefs, a lot of Christians, a lot of churches that downplay a lot of the, the, the things of God and say, oh, those are just our showings and you don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. Stop stop falling for the philosophy of men and understand the effectual working of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And it takes you and I to believe it, or in other words, to be faithful or to entrust our life or our situations to it. Last one, we give you up. Second Peter 1, 21. It says, for the prophecy, which is the word of God, which is the prophesied word of God, he said, for the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, all right. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the majority of us don't even believe in the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Ooh. majority of us don't even believe in the Holy Ghost. So how is so we're gonna have a hard time as Paul as Paul spoke to the Thessalonians. He, he told Thessalonians, he said that uh, that they would receive the word of God, which he which you have heard of us, talking about the holy men that are speaking by the Holy Ghost. Ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. If you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, how in the world do you believe that the word of God is spoken, that the word of God is true? It takes the unction, the unctioning of the spirit. Remember, the other scripture said taking the sword of the spirit, mm -hmm. which is the word of God. This thing is all about God's word. It's not about you and I and what kind of programs we can come up with. It's all about being faithful to the word of God because the word of God effectually works. The word of God will bring every intended and desired result to end, to the end. But be it unto you according to your faith. Mm -hmm. And so as it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Lord, allow, allow the Lord to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Scripture declares, except a man is born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We need to be born again. We must be born again. Mm -hmm. In order 
for the effectual working of the word in our lives. Amen. It's hard to say that we believe God and we don't have his spirit. It's hard to say I believe. It's hard to say I'm a believer, but I don't believe in the Holy Ghost because it's the sword of the spirit, which is the word. And so we pray that you would take the word and study it and that you receive something from the word. We pray we look forward to you joining us every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. for uh, to continue in our study of the word. We we'll give you up for tonight. Uh, we're going to pray. We'll bow here. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, precious name of Jesus, we come tonight thanking you once again for the visitation of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the word that we have heard tonight. We thank you for your, your presence being with us, Lord. We ask that you would take us from this place, watch over us, and bring us back together, assembled at the appointed time. And we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.